so hi uh, thank you for making time for joining my session uh, so in recent flutter forward event uh, flutter introduced a ton of features among them uh, they also introduced uh, they also migrated from flutter 3.2 to flutter 3.7 uh, also we also got a sneak peek at one of the upcoming feature which is element embedding so basically my name is shake afroz i am a software engineer one at geeky ants and today i'll be talking about what is element embedding and how to use it so basically this is how my talk will be structured first we'll go over the need for flutter element embedding then i'll talk about how it works i'll show you some code uh, snippets and explain them to you and at the end i'll give you some use cases and demos also while researching about this topic i came across many resources and i'll share all of them with you at the end so we all know about flutter flutter is gaining a lot of popularity right now we can build apps use in ios android web mac os windows linux you name it uh, so the only pain point is uh, flutter web which has a few limitations even while talking about flutter we mostly consider about mobile development and compare it with react native uh, we never compare it with uh, web technologies such as uh, react angular vue or svelte this is mainly because the way flutter works so flutter web when you make a flutter web app what it does is uses the dart code and compiles it into javascript and uses canvas and webgl kit uh, to end uh, to paint a single page web application while this uh, web application might be good for ui it might have a nice user experience user experience and have a great performance uh it lacks uh, what the browser needs to what the browser needs to properly index your search uh, properly index your page uh, in your search results even the flutter team themselves you uh, use html structured content rather than flutter web and advise us uh, to separate our primary application experience from our landing page marketing content and uh, help content so so that uh, it aligns uh, well on the search engine and the search engine knows what uh, your page is all about so to review uh, flutter is not flutter web is not seo friendly the initial load size is poor as when you load the flutter web it takes a bit of time uh, which i'll show you in a second and uh, plugins are not mature enough when compared to native counterparts so seeing all this if you already have a mobile app developed in flutter and you want to move to web or extend it to web uh, you might think flutter web is not a great option looking at all these points so you may think one more idea you may have is you can use a iframe and embed your flutter app application inside it and while that may work but uh, you have no way of communicating or controlling the app from the javascript side so that's where flutter element embedding comes in so with flutter element embedding what you can do is seamlessly integrate your flutter app inside your web uh, inside your web content as a native component so this is what flutter element embedding looks like uh, you may have your normal html structured page and flutter is embedded inside it as a component so uh, for those who have missed flutter forward event uh, this is something that the flutter team came up with uh, to demonstrate how element embedding works so basically what we have here is a normal html page uh, all these buttons are using html and on the right side we have a div that is running flutter so basically you can control the app from here and also you can control the app from javascript and since this is uh, acting like a native component now you can also Uh, control the css effects and even uh, while it's animating or spinning or doing its thing it still remains interactive so to demonstrate how this works better uh, i've created a counter app again so i'll show the code and uh, will even uh, implement one button so before that let me just explain you how everything works behind the scenes So first uh, in our index.html we have normal divs and our buttons and then we use flutter.js which has an api to load flutter engine and we are also 
getting the target target is the dev in which you want to embed the flutter app and passing it as a host element so once that's done uh, in our main dot dart we use package uh, packages js util and js uh, what they usually do is uh, provide you with utility functions to export the uh, app of uh, app state from dart to javascript to explain this better i have this diagram so here we have our two packages js util and js uh, mind you js is not the same as dart js and the js util provides you with utility functions create dart export and through set property what we do is take the app state and set it to javascript window global object so once that's done uh, in our main dot dart we can use the js library to annotate any dart functions and you can call them using callbacks and event listeners in your javascript so this is what a normal dart function with annotation looks like you just uh, import the js package and write at js dot js export and in the javascript side we have a immediately invoked function expression and we as uh, app state is currently a part of window object we can access it and we can say app state dot uh, whatever your dart function name is so let's see this in vs code so let me just turn this app yeah so basically uh, this div has uh, the flutter app embedded inside itself and i can increase the counter from here and i can even control the counter from here as for this html value field i have a add handler function so whenever the app uh, app state of flutter changes i call back that and change it accordingly so so let's go over the process of adding two more buttons here we'll add a decrement and a reset counter button so first in index.html what we do is uh, add let's add two buttons actually we'll add decrement and reset so decrement reset so once that's done uh, in our main dot dart we use this annotation at js dot js export and let me copy paste this and uh, what we can do is and let's add one more function so so once that's done in our javascript file uh, we can call event listeners and uh, paste the function name so we can just say app state dot decrease count and let this be decrement button and and let me add one more function for reset and what's the function name it's reset so yeah so once that done uh, you basically have uh, three buttons and you can increment dec decrement and uh, we can also reset it so apart from this uh, i have two more examples to show you so yeah so so this is what i was talking about the 
flutter takes a little bit a little bit of time to render so this card is made using flutter this is div is entirely made in flutter and the rest of it is a normal html content so as you can see and you can control your the card from here yeah so i built one more example using live which i'll show you in a bit so for those of you who don't know about live live is like a animation library or animation library with uh, many states so you can use a animation and add states to it like uh, for a loading spinner not a loading spinner you can have a loading animation and have states like loaded uh, doesn't load or something like that so basically here i have this sorry this call uh, made with live and i can control the animation from the app itself and here i can also control it from the javascript so so uh, we all know adobe flash is dead uh, so we can use a concept like this to create some games using live and flame for those who don't know about flame again it's a 2d game engine for flutter and you can create awesome games using it and you can have something like this so to conclude uh, what flutter embedding allows you is to uh, establish a handshake between flutter and javascript and allows you to seamlessly integrate your flutter app inside your web component uh, that's it uh, you can scan the qr code for resources and you can reach me out on twitter or linkedin